All right, welcome back. Here we are on day seven. This is the final day of our Leadership Foundations Masterclass. So welcome here. I'm glad you are here with me. It is snowing like crazy here in New Hampshire. For those of you who are just popping off for the first time, I know we had a few people added to the page. I'm Don Reby, uh, the CEO of Excellence in Analytics, and we are wrapping up our Leadership Foundations Masterclass. I see Carol and Abigail, and let's see, Rhea, Michelle, Christian, Jessica, Trisha. Look at everyone popping on. Hello, hello. Um, <clears throat> keep it coming, keep it coming. Yes, rocking the blue. We did the blue. I had to whip out an old blue. <laughs> So this is one I like to uh, uh, tuck away in the back of my closet. Hello, Renee. Hello, Abigail. Hello, Allie. Wink, wink. Hello, Celia. Good to see you. Uh, hello, hello. Look at you all popping on. You're ready for your last day. Hey, Erica. So good to see you on here. We're going to blast it. We're going to blast it out today. We're going to wrap it up today. We're going to talk about next steps. We're going to talk about, you know, what it is you are going to do from this point forward. Welcome, Rhea. Good afternoon, Jessica. Hey, Annie. Good to see you. Carol is here live. Oh, I'm so excited, Carol. We have some good news for you. Um, Jennifer's here. Uh, Jennifer Coram's here. Ashley's here. Welcome to all of you. Day seven. That's right. Welcome, Lisa. Good to see you. Hey, Tanya. Nice that you are here. My best friend growing up, um, you know, like fourth grade and beyond was Tanya. So uh, that reminds me of the good old days. We used to play basketball together. Hello, Celia and Jennifer. All of you, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a snow day for us up in New Hampshire. Our kids were sent home from school yesterday because of the snow. And so we are jam packed today. I was just shoveling, so I'm a little, I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> and I threw this puppy on. So we're here. Hello, Alicia. So good to see you. Glad you are here. Look at all these. I see little icons of you. So, but I think I see a bunch of smiles. Rhea, yes. The snow is pretty wild. We walked outside and we couldn't even open the door. So we were trying to squeeze the door open and shovel underneath it. Renee, I'm sure you couldn't relate, huh? Callie Gal. <laughs> um, Caroline, yes. Snow stopped overnight down in your neck of the woods. Yeah, no, we got, we got a couple feet up here. Well, maybe not that much. I don't know. It's just enough to where you have to shovel and it and you're in in the path of shovel and you're kind of looking out <laughs> beyond the path of shovel so it's it's a bit it's a bit i'll have to take a picture and show you guys it's pretty cool on my personal page i i posted a, a facebook uh, i posted a picture of this morning when it was quiet and and the snow had just fallen it was really nice all right so mj uh, lisa says it's 59 and sunny well lucky Lucky you, Lisa. Lucky you, Lisa. I like it. That's good at going outside weather. Welcome, Shannon. Glad that you are popping on in. Um, condo fees for the win. I like it, Erica. <laughs> so today we are wrapping up. So I wanted to share a huge congratulations. A huge congratulations to you. There's 27 of you here right now in Rising. I know several of you join in on the replay. If you are on the replay, let us know that you are here. And y'all have been good about that. Like we have been seeing replay, replay, replay. And we've been going back and hopefully you feel really, really supported. And so, you know, we're thankful. This is the very last day. This is it. This is where it ends kind of for you. So we're going to walk through a couple of key concepts today. Michelle says it's going to be 60 and she's in it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Hey, Mallory. Good to see you here live. Hey, uh, Matthew, MJ. Good to see you. Uh, Mallory, I already said hi to you. Welcome. Here you are. Uh, yes, it is a little chilly. It is a little chilly. I think the weather's not too, too bad. Like it's actually maybe 30 degrees, but it's, you know, when you're shoveling, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> okay. So congratulations to all of you. This is the last day. This is our wrap up session. So you're going to get a couple of more nuggets today. You're going to get your next steps and we're going to wrap this whole thing up. Okay. And I have to just say, congratulations. I mean, we were pretty intense. We were seven days rocking, right? Rocking. You got so much love and so much content over the last seven days that it must be spilling out your ears, right? How many of you are feeling so motivated, so inspired, so ignited? How many of you are just feeling like, I want to rock and roll right now? You are listing out the activities that you're doing. You, I, I saw so many of you just excited about the connections that you are making and the growth in your own leadership. 
Lisa's rocking. Yes, exactly. Like folks are just rocking it out. Michelle is feeling like she's rocking it out. Yeah, Trisha too. This is, this is where we build momentum. Right now, you've been here for seven days. You've heard uh, Abigail, got the muscles going, MJ fireworks. I love it, I love it, I love it. And so this is where you've learned a little bit. You've kind of scratched the surface, but you've built some momentum here. You've built some momentum. Erica's so inspired, I love it. Alicia's motivated, ready to take action. Ashley is too, I can't. I can't wait to see what a week, a year, a month from now looks. Darcy needed this, yes, yes. And so um, Tanya says, such in inspiration in this group, absolutely. Caroline, yes, is gonna send you some extra materials over to Darcy. Annie Pollock, the, the light bulb has gone off for Annie, that's awesome. The light bulb for Lisa and Michelle, um, you know, you're in it. Is that you dancing? Oh my God. I love it. Salsa. Na, da, da. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And so a lot of growth has happened right now. And I, if you're still taking notes at this point, I want you to write down the word momentum, momentum, right? Because what you've done is you've really worked hard over the last seven days. You've gone through an experience. You probably haven't experienced before that built energy around positivity, right? That built a constant energy. You heard from Rhea. Who loves Rhea? A shout out to Rhea. You all heard from Rhea. You heard from Jen Koner. Shout out to Jen Koner. You also heard from Angelica. And if you're like, what is she talking about? Go back to the units. We have some success stories in there, some inspiring stories for you. You heard from some great people who were you a year ago right? They were you a year ago. They had just had a taste of one of these classes and they're like, oh, I just feel it. I feel a little bit and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock and roll with it. And now they are completely transformed. Yes, Alicia too. Exactly. Uh, I know, right? Who doesn't love Rhea, right? Um, Erica loved the stories. Uh, yes, Rhea, Jennifer, Angelica, Michelle, you're right. They're all amazing women. The three pack, Allie loved it too. And then you had Nick, the sergeant from Rhode Island, who's building analytical capacity in his agency and in his state, right? And his story of, you know, how he had to kind of take a step back from his ego and, you know, had to put forth and really learn and grow and work hard. And, you know, six months of six months ago, he was in a different place than he is right now. And now he's uh, like a, a model, a model agency, right? He's it's still in the beginning. He's still building, but he's grown so much over the last couple months. Yes, Nick is phenomenal, phenomenal. You can't find hearts. <laughs> I know Facebook changed things a little bit. So, uh, hey Michelle, glad you you popping on in here. So, you know, and so you you have the momentum now. You have the stories. You have a couple of tools, and we'll talk about some more tools for you. You have a couple of tools, but you have what's more important, which is momentum. You have the belief that you are capable. There is more for you, right? There is more for you. There is more than spinning. There is more than, you know, looking through the clouded lenses. There is more than feeling like this squashed pancake between, you know, upper management and the people that you're serving. Uh, for those of you who are rising into leadership, my hope for you is that you're building that foundational piece right now. Kenny says, thanks for the invite. I'm always tuned in to the delay broadcast. Um, oh, good. I'm so glad you are here live. Let's celebrate. Kennedy made it here live. I'm happy that you made it here live. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so for those of you who are on the replay, let us know that you are on the replay here as well. Look at all this love. I see you guys loving on each other in the comments. This is awesome. So, so a huge congratulations to you. Momentum is the word right now. We're gonna talk about what's next for you. What action steps? Some of you have already taken some action steps. You've already gotten enrolled in some stuff. Some of you have your lists ready to rock and roll. Well, we're gonna iron all that out because those of you who've worked with me in the past, you know that why bother coming to a training if you're not gonna take action? So we're gonna talk about that action that you're gonna take today, all right? Are you in? Are you in? All right, good. So I will say um, we have, at the end of every month, we select a winner for, uh, on our um, Rise Each Other post. That's another opportunity for us to grow as leaders, right? We rise each other. So every month in our success story, un in the unit called Success Stories, we have what's called the Rise uh, Each Other. And you get to nominate somebody who's amazing in your world 
right, who's phenomenal in your world, and you nominate them there, that's all you do is you tell us about them, and then we pick someone at the end of every month and we send them a nice little wellness package. And so we have our winner for January, and so uh, I wanna say that Erica Babarins, congratulations, congratulations to you for stepping into leadership and nominating Carol Fitzgerald. Carol Fitzgerald is our winner for January, so go ahead and congratulate Carol. Carol is a, a, an incredible analyst who um, who runs you know multiple facets of the local analyst group, and she helps everybody who ever needs to be helped. She was my mentor back in the day in the 90s when I first got on board, and she's been my friend ever since. So congratulations to you, Carol Fitzgerald. Fitzy for um, for being nominated and congratulations to you Erica for rising into your own leadership by nominating her so yes look at all the congratulations here uh, folks are congratulating you left and right so that's one action step that you should be writing down that you can do to grow your leadership you can nominate somebody all Erica did was write her name down and why she loved on our on Carol on Carol right and so we we take the rest we take the rest out of your hands and we send them a little wellness package a little love package okay so Carol, get in touch with Michelle Lay and send her your um, address where you'd like to receive this package and we'll make sure it gets to you pretty soon, okay? Look at all this. Erin's congratulating you, Michelle, uh, Allie, everyone's just excited for you, Carol. Yes, you are You are a phenomenal individual. Those of you who know Carol, yes. that <laughs> you, Welcome, Nick, glad that you are here. Yeah, Carol's phenomenal. And so on your next steps, right? So you have your little notebook running, I'm helping. On your next steps, write down February, rise each other, and make sure you get in to the February post and nominate your person or persons. You can nominate multiple people, and you can nominate the same person if they've you know impacted you in an incredible way. So Trisha, Tanya, a bunch of you are just congratulating Carol, so congratulations on that. We also have forgot our winner from yesterday, and we want to we want to uh, we want to highlight someone from yesterday and someone from today who's been rocking out the homework, who's really been digging in. And so we have two wellness winners today. We have two wellness winners today. I'm going to announce yesterday's right now, and then I'll announce today's winner a little bit later on. Does that sound good to you guys? All right. So the winner for um, yesterday's session, so I have to say, this individual has really stepped up. This individual has really stepped up in leadership. Not only has this individual submitted homework, um, I don't even know if it was on time, and it doesn't really matter, it just happens, right? The homework was there. But what this individual did was read other people's comments and support other people in their growth. And I was incredibly impressed by this, this individual. Many of you have deeply impressed me, uh, but this particular person has been incredible. And so I wanna say congratulations, Aaron Jones. You are the winner of yesterday's session. I wanna congratulate you. Yay, yay, yay to Aaron. And I'm sure that everyone here has felt some love from you, Aaron, um, in the way that you've been supporting them throughout this whole series. So congratulations, Aaron. You are the winner. Reach out to Michelle. Lay L E I G H and and shoot her off your address or police agency or co company wherever you work and let her know um, where you feel comfortable us sending you a package. So we'll send you a nice little package. Chris is cheering you on. Abigail's cheering you on. Alicia's cheering you on. Yeah, you all know Aaron's been phenomenal, phenomenal. Many of you have. Many of you have. I could literally. I have a list. I have a list here of all you amazing people. I've seen uh, Alicia and Michelle Subero Pradell, Michelle Wentz, Tanya, uh, Lisa, Sally Ashton, Renee, Victor, Celia, Jennifer, uh, Clarissa, like M Melissa Gallant, Gallon, um, uh, the list. Mallory, Abigail, Lucy. Fitzy, Carol Fitzgerald, Christiane, Jessica, Ashley Smith, Sarah Chamberlain, um, you know, we have Vina over here, Kimber, I know you have like pseudo names, right? Um, I'm looking at Kaylee, Christiana, um, D, Alex, Milana, um, Elise Pierce, Robin, Del Negro, Amy, um, you know, D, uh, just uh, Carrie, Delia, all kinds of folks, all kinds of folks. And I probably missed some. Alex, you just popped on. I was just calling your name. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the thing. You all have been rocking this out. You all have momentum right now. We are ready for next steps. We are ready for the next step. So congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to Carol for the January 
rise each other. Make sure that on your action steps, you have February rise each other and you go into that post in the success story section, right? Find that rise each other post and nominate someone. That's your next step. Um, and then of course, also make sure you're writing down a next step for you is to check out the February calendar that's pinned to the top of the Facebook group. We only had a couple of people after yesterday's session go in and note what they're most um, excited about. And we wanna get all of you in there letting us know what you're most excited about. We have a bunch of stuff happening in February. We have our March speakers lining up who are coming in, book authors and you know uh, major leadership folks coming in to talk to us on these Thursday events. So we wanna know how we can serve you even more so. So go into that February content calendar, let us know what you're most excited about. That's okay, Lisa, you have time. Write it down right now. All of you have time. We're gonna select a winner. What's today? We're selecting our winner tomorrow. So make sure you get your butts in there. Make it happen, right? Make it happen. Action, inspired action. What are you most looking forward to? And for those of you who um, have already reached out to us saying that you wanted to be on the Supervisor's Productivity Day, that two-hour session, um, the link to it is in there. A couple of you have already clicked on it and we're only having 20 people because that's, that's, that's all we can handle. So, um, click on the link and if you, if you missed out and you can't get in, reach out to Caroline and we'll, we'll find some solutions for you. But the first 20 are the ones who are getting in and it's hundred percent free. Okay. All right. So that's that. Uh, so let's talk about, you know, what, let's talk about your role as a leader, right? Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for Michelle for putting that in there. So your role is a strategic thinker. Your role as a leader is to be a strategic visionary, a, a thinker, right? You're really thinking about that vision and you're the chiropractor for your agency. You're aligning people with that vision. I don't care if you're the only person in the unit, right? If you're, if you're rising into leadership, you're like, I don't, I don't have people to lead. You still have people who can be in alignment with what, what you're trying to accomplish, right? So, so don't skip out on that step if, if you're not leading people. If you are leading people and you're looking for the structural design of it, you know, how do I build the, the vision? How do I create that action vision? We can help with that. Just reach out to us. We can set you up with some tools. Um, you know, you want to be thinking about building high performance teams, leading and optimizing elite teams. So we started a little bit of that this week, this past week with our relationship building strategies. We talked about how to begin to build those um, and, and set up those cultures. And that's just the beginning. It's just the beginning, right? Because leadership is, is long term. It's not, it's not, you're not going to establish leadership in a week, but you are going to get started and you do have momentum. So let's keep that up. You're also thinking you're, you're spearheading growth, right? You as a leader are spearheading growth. How can we uh, provide exceptional value? How can we grow our service? How can we provide that value with, with, with excellence to the people that we're serving? So you're always thinking about um, how we can grow our, our productivity, essentially. You're thinking about alliances, strategic partnerships, who you can align with internally and externally. So for those of you who have started your relationship building strategy, right? You've got the names, you got the goal, now you've built the strategy. I want you to think about some external partners as well, not just the internal partners, really thinking about that ex those external partners, right? And then effective process creation, right? process, systems, creating the flow, creating those, those processes and, and the improvement paths to those processes, right? Really nailing down those processes, okay? So if you feel like you're pretty solid on the relationship building um, techniques that you've learned in this masterclass, if you feel like, okay, I'm thinking like a leader, I got the vision in there, I'm thinking about the culture, I'm thinking about the team, and I'm gonna work on the relationship building, step one. If you feel solid about that, I want you to give me a thumbs up in the comments that you are feeling really good about the relationship building piece. It can't be uh, super forced, right? Like, you know, if you're, if you're building a relationship with your chief and your chief is not like super close to you, like he's a couple layers up or she's a couple layers up, you might not be saying to yourself, I want to know her future goals. Like, you know, like you might be saying, I just want to get to know this person better, right? You don't want to make it awkward. You want to make it meaningful. All right, Nick, Abigail, a bunch of you, a thumbs up. You're feeling pretty good. Rhea's feeling good on that relationship, people. And so um, Jen as well. Great. So the, the core characteristics piece is key. And so when you're thinking about developing 
um, your core characteristics, there's, there's a lot of reasons why, right? Tanya, Michelle, Alicia, I see you all, you're good. You wanna get outside the emotional climate. When you have a solid understanding of your core characteristics, you can get outside of that emotional climate. Oh good, Darcy, I'm, I'm so glad that you are feeling much better. You love that exercise. Ashley's feeling good, Renee's feeling good. Yes, they're, they're quicker with the emojis. I think they, you guys practice the emojis. <laughs> So knowing your core characteristics also gives you uh, persistence in the face of rejection. You will be rejected. You will face resistance. There will be people who don't like you. But when you develop your core characteristics, right, you become persistent in that sense. You become persistent in the face that you might be rejected. People might not get why you're doing what you're doing but you're so solid in your vision and you're so solid in your core characteristics that you're moving, you're continuing to move forward, right? And that's often a hard thing um, when you have staff, right? Who are not necessarily understanding what, where you're coming from. Um, you can develop a non-anxious presence. When you know where you're going, you become less anxious. You become less reactive. You become proactive. So it's important to know those characteristics. Um, you can be comfortable with other people's displeasures. Did you hear that? You can stop being a people pleaser. Yep, I just gave you permission. You can be on you can be comfortable with others others non comfort if that makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, yes. Exactly, Erica. You know, being not when you are clear on your core values, when you are clear on your vision, you're not going to worry so much about the folks that. Um, you know, don't uh, are resisting. Yes, you're gonna put in a place. You're gonna put into place strategies to move them along. But you're gonna get comfortable with the fact that people are not. Um, you don't have to please everybody, right? So Tanya says, not being a people pleaser can cause anxiety. Yeah, yeah, it, it sure can. Uh, but when you are determined, when you have the objective in mind, right? When you are focused you are gonna come from a place that's caring, right? And you are gonna be from that learning mindset and you are gonna to move toward your goals with your team, okay? And you actually position yourself, when you develop your core characteristics in that vision, you position yourself to bring greater meaning to your company. You position yourself to bring greater meaning to your agency or to your unit, right? Right? <laughs> Aaron, no, no, it's not. It is not the part of the job description. So knowing who you are, creating the vision, working on these leadership skills over time is positioning you as the CEO. All right. It's positioning you as a CEO and it's going to give you the opportunity to provide more meaning to your organization or your agency. Now, listen to that. It's going to give you more power to provide more value and more meaning to your agency when you are clear on your core values and on the vision. So for those of you who are struggling, and I see all the comments, so for those of you who are struggling with being the people pleaser, make if, if that's a big struggle for you, make that the long-term goal, right? In the long run, they they will be happier. I am building this for the long run, right? So So make it for the long run. Keep that in your mind. So, you know, um, when you develop your core characteristics, like you're, you're pointed in the right direction. You're just pointed in the right direction and y you know, you know what's important. Yeah. Um, yes, Nick, clear on core values and vision. Exactly. And so, you know, and, and to know that there are other people and that you are not alone. And I have a story to share with you. And so I was going back and forth with my team. I'm like, oh, do I share these stories? And they're like, it's important for folks to know, right? It's important for folks to know some, some stories. So I'm going to share a story with you. For those of you who don't know me very well, um, you know, I worked for a police agency years ago. And I remember being in this police agency, a woman in policing, one of the highest paid people at the agency, New to analytics, uh, well, I was not new to analytics. The, the state was new to analytics. I had a lot to prove, right? I had a lot to prove. I had my vet, my chief said, you have a lot to prove. We want success stories. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and you know, that, that was a lot of pressure, right? I, I didn't know anyone else. I didn't know any other analysts who had built units. I didn't know any other analysts who um, really had, um, you know, 
created this kind of stuff from scratch, right? I knew people who were strong in the field. And so I sought, you know, I sought them out. I knew um, Christopher Bruce and Deb Peel and Kara Fitzgerald. And so I sought some, some real strong mentors out. But I really didn't have like, I didn't have like this, this, this group that I could really go to and, and toss some ideas around. And I have to be really honest with you here. At home, life was kind of crumbling. <laughs> So on the outside, I would go to work and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to be so strong and I have to be so perfect and I have to be so like, oh my God, they're going to keep me. They're not going to fire me. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to produce more than they ever dreamed I would produce and I'm going to make this happen. And at home, I was in this horrible situation at home and I couldn't tell anyone about it. I couldn't tell anyone about it. I was in a situation where um, I had just given birth. And this was over 10 years ago. I had just given birth and I felt like everyone was so happy for me. Oh, Don, oh, Don, you know, life is so good for you. And inside I was absolutely torn apart. I was the strong one for all my friends because that's, I was the one that they went to, right? Thank you, Lisa. I was the one that my friends went to for support. And I, I, I felt like I couldn't really go to them um, without being like the perfect Don, right? Like Don has it all together. And, um, and so I, I faced this home situation by myself for a very long time. And I, I was mad at myself that my home life was so screwed up <laughs> and I would go to work and I'd put on that sunshiny face and they'd be like, you're always so happy. And I'm like, yes, I'm always so happy. But little did they know what was going on in my house. And I didn't know who to turn to. I felt like if I told someone at the police department what was going on in my home, then they would think I was weak and I was not that strong woman that could lead this unit, right? They, they would know something about me that was not strong. And I, so I couldn't say anything, right? I couldn't say anything to my family because I was the one. I was the one who went to college. I was the one who got her graduate degree. I was the one who did all the stuff, right? Who owned multiple houses. I was the one. And I really couldn't tell my friends, quite honestly, because I was embarrassed about what I had allowed in my life. So I had all this imbalance going on in my life and, um, and I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to deal with it and I felt very, very alone. And I have to say, one of the hardest things I ever did was leave that home environment and move to New Hampshire, away from that horrible home environment. And it was really, really hard. It, it was really, really hard to leave that home in, environment. Yes, Lisa, I had major fear of judgment because I had climbed that ladder so much and I was seen as this person who like, did it, did, it, did it all, right? She does it all, right? And I had, I had my first daughter when I was 19 years old, and so I had already proved that I could accomplish. And so I didn't want people to be like, oh, see? See, she was that teen mom and she screwed up, right? See? And, and of course, that was 20 years prior, but I still felt that way. It was still in my head. And so, um, so I went about my day having these kind of double lives and not having leadership of self at all, at, at all. And so I learned the hard way, you know, when I left, I scraped a lot. I reinvented myself a lot. I fell a lot and I finally had the opportunity. Um, thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. Um, and, and I finally had, you know, the opportunity to, you know, um, join some things that made me feel good about myself, right? That made me feel better about myself inside. And quite honestly, especially for women in policing and especially for civilian supervisor women in policing, like you feel sometimes like you have to be so strong. You have to be so strong or you won't be accepted as, as this leader there. And that's exactly how I felt. And so I really hurt myself at, at home because I didn't open this up. I didn't share a lot of this with a lot of people. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that, Michelle. And so um, I, I worked really hard to figure out this leadership of self stuff. You know, I, I, I joined a bunch of groups. I did therapy. I bought coaching. You know, I did the whole thing. And after 10 years, I have to say I'm in a really good place. I'm in a really good place. I understand what it's like to be struggling and to be want to be strong and to want to, you know, be excellent in life. Right. I, I understand what it's like to, to have that happy face on when inside you're like, holy crap, <laughs> what's my life is like crazy, right? And I have to say that's part of the reason why I built these programs because it doesn't have to be that way. 
It doesn't have to be that way. So I took all the coaching, all the leadership program, all the therapy, <laughs> all the knowledge that I had from the field. I put everything into these packages for folks to, you know, leap over those hurdles that I spent a lot of time in. I mean, from adrenal fatigue to, you know, just not taking good care of myself at all, right? So, so, you know, I took my experiences and I built them into these programs so that nobody ever has to not have a platform to go to. So that nobody ever feels like there's nowhere to turn, that there's no one who can, you know, um, be, teach that professional side, teach that leadership side and that leadership of self side. That combination, that integration of leadership of self and leadership of career, I didn't know existed. I didn't know you could be a strong leader and be a strong leader of self. I thought one had to give, right? And it doesn't have to be that way. And so, um, you know, the, the work that I did over the last 10 years was hard, <laughs> hard, 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 but it was real and it was true. And so when I started looking around the law enforcement environment, I started seeing women and men, you know, struggling with the same things, maybe not the exact same things, but with the leadership of self and career leadership. When I started seeing that, I'm like, I have to build something for them because it doesn't have to be this way. We can accelerate their career growth. We know what it's like to be successful in the, in the, in career. So we can accelerate that area in combination with this leadership of self piece, which we fully integrated into our programs. So that's when I see Jen and Rhea and Angelica and Nick and the other Nick and, and Judith and I don't know, the whole list of other people who are, who, are, who are taking advantage of all of those lessons combined, right? Into one, this wellness, this leadership piece combined into one and I'm seeing them succeed. I know that I'm here doing exactly what I was put on this earth to do, which is to provide the opportunity for people who are in leadership, who are growing in leadership, to, to have that complete work-life harmony, to have that excellent career and that excellent home life. And you don't have to do it alone. I, I've literally made it my mission to create platforms for people to not do it alone. Because when you do it alone, it's, it's 10 years of struggle and it doesn't have to be, right? When you do it with people, when you do it with community and not just any community, but people who are rising, who have the same core values and belief systems that you do, it accelerates your growth in both arenas. I've seen the success of, of folks in our team and I want to see the same success in you, okay? Um, so thank you, Caroline and Michelle for encouraging me to share that story. Sometimes I always wonder how it goes if, if I'm going to cry, if I'm not going to cry, like what's going to happen? And I, I truly, you know, admire the folks who, who rise in leadership and who recognize that that leadership of self, that home life, that personal value, that confidence piece has to be there. I didn't have, I mean, I was this crazy confident person and then I was in this scenario and I became this un no, not confident person at all, at all. I, I became stuck in a wheel. And it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. So, you know, so thank you for letting me share that story with you. And so I really turn to you now. I turn to you. Yes, Darcy. Tribe equals community equals growth equals success. Exactly. So this tribe of excellence is just an entry point. This is just an entry point into some of the bigger growth programs that we have. And so a lot of you have been hearing about the programs that we that we do offer and I wanted you to know why those programs existed. I wanted you to know that they are a compilation of excellent career, right? This amazing career stuff that can really accelerate you in combination with that leadership of self stuff, right? And so we have those two levels. We have the analyst level and then we have that leadership supervisor level. And today we're talking about that leadership supervisor level. They are plowing right behind me. I hope that you can hear me. <laughs> It feels really loud behind here. Can you all hear me okay? <laughs> this plow is going on. Alicia has found her tribe. Yes. And so, you know, what, what we look for, it, it doesn't matter if you're earning $35,000 a year or if you're a six-figure earner. Like, we don't care about those kind of things at all. What we care about in our group is, you know, what matters to us is are you willing to do the work? 
Are you willing to do the work that isn't always comfortable, right? That isn't always comfortable. Are you willing to be the leader that others need you to be, even if it means looking in the mirror, even if it means practicing, you practicing coaching other people, right? Even if it means um, getting uncomfortable, right? Getting uncomfortable. So uh, we look for folks who are willing to do the work, who are not looking for shortcuts, who are willing to, willing to really dive in uh, and be part of this elite team who's really building that culture um, of, of a higher level of community. We have men and women in our programs, right? Leaders, men and women leaders in our programs who are really stepping it up. So we look for folks who are looking to build legacy. We look for folks who are saying, I get it. I get that legacy is important and I need to build it. I just don't know how, right? Or maybe, you know, you need some help rising the people on your team. That's what we look for. We look for people who are looking to build that legacy in private sector, in public sector, but who really want to build healthy, happy teams and healthy, happy selves, right? Um, so the, the leadership incubator is really that it's that it's an incubator. It's 360 degrees. They're so loud. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> it's really loud. Maybe I'll take you guys over into my kitchen. Maybe I'll just do that in a second. Let's see. All right, we'll try it. Hopefully you can still hear me now. So, you know, leadership is transferable. I want to highlight that leadership is a hundred percent transferable. So the work that you do in your leadership growth this past week, as well as however long you continue to stay with us, leadership that leadership is transferable to your next place, right? Um, yes, it is so loud. <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to just move you guys. You can hear me, Carol? All right, then I'll keep you here. I'll keep you here if you guys can hear me. <laughs> so... The, the leadership program, the way, the incubator, it's an incubator. It gives you 360 degrees of support, support for how to develop leadership at work, in your career, how to build infrastructure, how to build legacy, how to retain, how to, um, you know, build yourself, right? And it's complete leadership of self, how to build the confidence, how to professionalize yourself in a way that commands, right? How to lead with excellence in both your professional and your work life. So I'm gonna share one last story with you and then we're gonna pop off here. Um, it's so fun. I love, you know what, this is an obstacle. This is an obstacle, but we can, this is a great opportunity to share that we can, you know, we can continue with the message, right? So continue with the vision or, or we can let distractions get to us. So I'm not gonna let the distraction get to us, just like I didn't let that other distraction get to us, right? We're gonna move forward with this and we're gonna continue and wrap this up with excellence, okay? All right, so um, I have another story for you and this is a really fun one. Have you guys ever heard of the fuselage story? Have you heard of the fuselage story? So the fuselage, so basically a plane crashed, right? A plane crashed. I'm gonna knock on the window. <laughs> yes, Caroline, if you're ready for true growth, community and support, yeah, then it's for you, and then it's for you. So this plane crashed, right? And um, several people survived, several people f survived. So the fuselage is like the, bu the, the body of the plane, like a piece of the body was missing um, and the body of the plane remained there. And so um, there were several people who survived. There were several people who survived this plane crash and they landed on this island. And they were looking around and they're like, okay, what do we do? <laughs> Where do we go? Um, we don't know what to do. We're going to starve to death. And they knew that they had to do something. But the majority of the people stayed. The majority of the people stayed right where they were, even though they knew that that meant death because they were comfortable, they were scared to go outside their comfort zone, right? Um, it could be, it could be Rhea, it could be. <laughs> but no, 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 this is a real story, this is a real story. So others, st people stayed here because they didn't wanna get upside, outside their comfort zone. They're like, oh, what if, what if we don't make it? <laughs> like, you're gonna die if you stay, right? But they needed, the, they needed some kind of safety net. Like at least if they stayed, they knew what was gonna happen. But if they left, they didn't know what was gonna happen. So these two brave people, these two brave people decided to leave. And so they went west and they walked and walked and walked and they walked through the jungle. They walked through, um, there had to be a leader that was a hunter. <laughs> two people, two people were on this plane, plane crashes. Everybody stays in this one little spot and two people decide 
we're gonna die. We need to go find help and, and that's what we're gonna do. So the two people kept on walking and they went through terrain, they went through mud, they went through heat, they went through animals, they went through gnats at night, they went through all kinds of things. And they went walked 16 miles, right? They walked 16 miles west and they finally found help. They finally found help, right? So um, they were, they drank and they eat, they ate and they were like refreshed and like, okay, we finally found help. And so um, they were almost starving by the time that they got there. But here's the thing, guys, they started off going west. Did they make it? Yes. But here's the thing. If instead of going west, they only went east, two miles east, they would have found help just two miles away, just two miles away, right? And no, I did not, Nick, I did not, this story is not about me. <laughs> so if they only had a guide, they would have known not to go west, but to go east two miles away. And then they could have gotten help faster. They didn't have to almost starve. They didn't have to go through all the gnats and the animals and the, and the terrain and the forest and all the stuff that they went through. They didn't have to go through all that pain. They didn't have to go through that. A coach can really guide you, right? Just like a, someone could have guided them. They can guide you to think in ways that maybe you didn't think before. They can help you avoid the 16 miles and get to the two miles. Can you do it? Can you build your leadership? Yeah, you can listen to every YouTube thing in the world. You can Google leadership. You can read a bunch of books. And yes, you can build your leadership the same exact way I did, right? You can spend 10 years doing it um, or 16 miles, or you can go east. You can have a guide bring you through, right? Bring you through. You can't see the lenses that you're wearing right now are cloudy because they, they got you so far. Like my lenses got me so far. Then I needed the lenses from somebody else to get me farther, right? And to get me beyond. So the lenses, your lenses, yeah, you can rinse them out a few times and, and you can follow on your path for 16 miles or 10 years, right? Or you can borrow the lenses of somebody else. You can borrow the lenses um, of somebody else, right? Uh, Lisa says, so you know, so, so know your travel route and research where you might crash. Yeah, or, or find a guide, find a guide, because you can't see through the lenses, the same cloudy lenses that got you to the cloudy place to begin with. You need a different lens. You need a different lens. And it doesn't mean it's a better lens. It's just a different one, right? So only two people walked away, even though they were guaranteed death, only two people walked away. And so, you know, people stay because they feel safe. People stay where they are because they feel safe. And so there's too many blind spots for, for folks to feel safe, to stay or to travel out on their own. When you have a guide, life just becomes faster and easier. You accelerate faster and easier. Exactly, Carol. If you don't know where you're going, you might end up somewhere else, right? You just might end up somewhere else. So, you know, so the, the question for you is, are you feeling safe? Are you where you are because that's a safe place to be? Or are you saying to yourself, you know, all right, I, I, I'm, I'm one of those two people and I've been working really hard trying to, find, trying to build that leadership. I've been walking the 16 miles and spending the 10 years, right? Is that really you? And so sometimes the solution shows up in ways that you weren't expecting the solution to show up. The solution when it shows up is probably very uncomfortable. It's probably expensive. It probably is scary as heck because you're like, what? I don't know if I can do this. Is this right for me, right? And so the choice really is, the idea really is to get uncomfortable. Sometimes, you know, that you, you, you have to move in faith. You have to say, I want, that's what I want. That's where I'm going. That's where I want to be. I don't have the right lenses. And as a leader, I know I have to find those lenses. And I'm telling you that we've created the lens for you. We've created the tools and solutions for you. All of it's already done. The team, the support, the leadership growth development, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the group coaching, the um, energy that you need, the momentum that you need, the accountability that you need. Exactly, Caroline, fear is a choice, fear is a choice. So when you decide to step into you know, growth, right? You decide to leap in to growth, 
the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. Um, Allie says like moving a thousand miles away for a new job. Yeah, what are you doing, Allie, to set up that foundation so that you are fully supported, so that your growth is accelerated? Yes, Jen, discomfort equals growth. The folks who are in our program, they're uncomfortable. Like they're looking in the mirror at themselves with exercises, with modules, with practice, with one-on-ones, with group, group coaching. They're looking at themselves and they're getting really uncomfortable. They are, right? Um, yes, Annie, take the leap of faith. I remember when I hired my first coach, I almost cringed. I was like, I can't, like, I, this is not, like, what do you, only rich people do these things and they don't. Only people who want accelerated growth do these things. And um, what's funny about what's funny about um, coaching in our programs is, you know, as you build out your leadership, all these other things happen in your life. I've looked at Michelle. I have looked at, um, you know, Judith. I have looked at Nick and our other Nick who owns a business. I've looked at all of our folks, Jen and Rhea and Angelica that you've met and, and a, a myriad of others, right? Uh, all kinds of other folks. And I've seen they're happier. They're better skilled. They're better equipped. They have community. They have everything they need to accelerate to the next level. And I want you to have exactly the same opportunities that they have. Exactly, Michelle. Success starts at the end of your comfort zone. So if you've been thinking to yourself, you know what? I want to get uncomfortable. And I want to do it in a way that I've seen other people succeed. Because that was me. That was me. I was like, how do I know you? How do I know this will work, right? <laughs> and so I, I always want to look for programming and support that is um, has seen success. That has seen success. So you've seen some of our success stories. And there's hun hundreds of others, right? Uh, you've seen some of our success stories. The folks who put in the work grow. Yes, be uncomfortable intentionally, Lisa, exactly. I invite you right now to step outside your comfort zone, to get on a phone call, to figure out what is, what is the next step? What is the next step for you? Yes, you can travel the 16 miles through the woods and our Tribe of Excellence community is gonna be here to support you. You will never you know, be par un unparted, right? You will always be part of our Tribe of Excellence Facebook community. We have here, we have every Thursday, we have something new and exciting for you. So you can come back here and that could be one of your tools, right? And that's the tool along the 16 mile path, right? Um, or you can decide, I want to be like Nick and be completely transformed in three months. I wanna be like Jen and be on that leadership success path. I wanna be like Rhea and have my world completely changed. I wanna be Ange like Angelica and have that confidence just shake me. I wanna be like Andrew, and you know, become that relationship expert. I wanna be like the many other leaders we work with who really rise themselves quickly with direction and with support, right? And with support. So if you are ready, yeah, yeah. You are the new me. That's right, Nick. You are the new me. Sergeant Rhea uh, was very vulnerable. He's like, ah, and now he's like slamming it, slamming it hard. So, so you know, take, take the leap. Take the leap, whether it's with this company or another company. If you find that another company is a better fit for you, that's okay too. Take the leap, dive into your own growth. Don't be in that hamster wheel. Don't be me 10 years ago. Don't feel like you have to do this on your own because you don't. We have systems in place that work. We have systems in place that work for leadership in career, for leadership in business, law enforcement analytics, all the leadership um, and, and non-law enforcement, right? We have the infrastructure, we have the support over there, and we have that leadership of self-peace too. That You don't have to reinvent on your own. You just have to show up and be ready to work. So for those of you, welcome Darcy, I know you're just popping on here. For those of you who are, are joining in on the live, go ahead and let me know that you are hearing me, that you are receiving me, that you are like, hum, this is something to think about. You know, that, that you know, I remember when, when I first heard about this, I was just, this kind of stuff, I was like, hmm, this was brand new because I was in the law enforcement environment and they don't have this in the law enforcement. In, in fact, that's another reason why. There's nothing like this in law enforcement ever, right? And then when I went to the corporate world, I'm like, oh, wow, these people kind of think differently, right? And so, you know, when you put these things in, in your life, when you, when you want to know how to build a Roth or build your financial growth plan, you go and you talk to a financial 
advisor, right? And, and you get the real deal, right? When you want to know how to build a house, you call a trusted, a trusted engineer, house builder, and they can help you build your, the dream, your dream home. And when you want to build excellence in your career and in your personal life, and you want to completely excel, you lock arms with folks like us who have done this and who are doing this every minute of every day. This is my personal dream coming true. And I will continue to put my heart and soul into this, a heart and soul into this. Tanya's live. Um, Ashley is live and learning so much. Yeah. You do not have to be alone. Alone is a choice. You do not have to go 16 miles west. You can go two miles east. And we are here to bring you two miles east to the solutions. So um, I'm going to leave my schedule open for the rest of the day today. I'm going to leave my schedule open for the rest of the day today and the first folks who reach out to me to say I want a 50 I just want 15 minutes just to talk to see to see if this is right done then I will create space for you from now until the end of today well I mean of course tomorrow if you want to um Sally welcome um and Caroline is also available um as well so you can reach out to either one of us and we can tell you the lowdown of the whole program see if it's right for you I know Alicia Alicia is one of our success stories too um, you know, see if it's right for you, but whatever you do, don't stop. Don't stop the momentum that you've built. Um, Rhea, yes, she said, y'all need to jump on that. Exactly. Exactly. You just need to jump on the phone call at the, at the worst you get, you get a phone call, right? Um, whatever you do, don't stop your momentum. Go do find solutions. We have one for you. If it's not a fit, that's fine, but build on the momentum that you've worked on this entire week build on the momentum that you've worked on this entire week don't let it die okay uh, we actually have our leadership group meeting tonight we have our leadership group meeting tonight we have another session meeting on thursday um, at one o'clock eastern right so we have all kinds of things that are available to you immediately so the only person who's in your way is you build on this momentum um, take charge of your life. Be that CEO. Hopefully you've had some amazing action steps that you can take, including rising other people, including looking at that February calendar and, you know, telling us what you're most excited about being here every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, yep. Leadership meeting tonight. <laughs> That's right. And Wednesday, we have our, our second group meets Wednesday. We have all kinds of yummy stuff, all kinds of good stuff going on. So we have lots of opportunity for those who are ready to work, those who are ready to grow, those who are ready to accelerate their growth and become the leaders that you want to be. For those of you who are in leadership right now and you're looking to build that legacy, you know, you too need this. You too need that connection, that growth together, right? That growth together. So I'm going to go ahead and sit by my phone and, and, and wait for you all to get in touch with us. Not really. I have, actually have a crazy schedule. Caroline knows. But I will definitely reach out to you, uh, back to you if you reach out to me directly. So feel free to do that and feel free to reach out to Caroline as well. The two of us will support you um, and give, answer some of your questions. All right. So um, until next time, until next time, uh, we have some great stuff coming up for you this Thursday. We have our, our regular Thursday session. So we hope to see you there. Um, and we have our peak product, we have our, our productivity masterclass for supervisors happening February 16th, right? So we hope to see at least 20 of you there. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, so we have a lot of good juicy stuff for you to continue this momentum. So you wrote momentum down. I hope you write jump, faith, leap down. You deserve it. I deserved it 10 years ago and you deserve it right now. All right. All right. So thank you so much for spending time with us. We appreciate each and every one of you. You are welcome, Annie and Aaron and Lisa um, and the rest of you. You are so welcome. And thank you for a, a, a wonderful week together. We truly, truly appreciate you. All right. Bye now.